Salutations, spooks, spirits, and specters, and welcome back to some more Shivers 2. We're exploring the uh, ever wonderful uh, marketplace here. Leave the snake alone, apparently. What is this? Found in an ancient burial ground deep under the city of Cyclone, this stone tablet tells the story of an ancient civilization, probably the Anasazi. Several experts have tried unsuccessfully to interpret the writings on the tablet, its message meaning well, only to the dead. At Gusta Guess, you can see one of these dead Indians now petrified and turned to stone. While you're there, don't forget to fill up that tank. Sorry, out of eggs and milk. Wait a second. Okay. That's not creepy at all. It's missing a button, so I assume that's related. Interesting. Right, we're gonna head on out. At least that was a quick, easy thing to get through. Alright, so what do we have left? So we got the library in front of us, then there's the church, the cafe, there's a barbershop, Pearl's house, and a warehouse. Okay. Oh, this music's not on. Why is only that one openable? Hmm. Wait a second, there's something weird going on here. Are you alright? <laughs> Who would have guessed those bookshelves would have toppled over so easily? The Iani Stone and Other Living Myths. Yes, that was fantastic. In the beginning, the creatures of the world lived in the second world deep under the ground. It was very foul, with unfinished creatures crawling over each other like reptiles in the darkness, spitting on one another or doing some other indecency. From his home in the first world, Tua, the creator, saw that they were fighting amongst themselves. He told Spider Grandmother to gather all the creatures and lead them upwards to the third world that lay just below the surface of the earth. Once they were in the third world, they had human bodies. They filled the new world and lived in peace and reverence for that which is sacred. Spider Grandmother instructed them to make prayer sticks, or bajos, and honor Tewa, Tua. Among them, however, were sorcerers who created bajos for evil purposes, changing the sacred rituals, stealing and fighting. Spider Grandmother gathered those humans who understood the meaning of life. She led them out of the third world through a narrow opening the Sipapu, into the world's surface or fourth world. Those left behind in the third world were destroyed, but a sorcerer sneaked out, and that is how evil came into the world. As they emerged, Mockingbird divided them into groups. Hoko Hohokum, Mogolon, Anasazi, and all other tribes of the world. 
Spider Grandmother gave a special charge to the Anasazi to guard the original Sipapu and keep it open so that the dead would remember the passageway to the third world from whence they came. She gave them the I Iyani Stone, a talisman of great power meaning breath or life. Along with the stone, she gave them instructions on how to perform the yearly ceremony so that the dead would not be lost. The Anasazi built a great kiva, Hopi word meaning underworld, around the Sipapu and selected 12 of their strongest warriors to defend it. Each year, as part of a secret ceremony, one warrior was chosen to carry a sacred bohas, bohas into the kiva. After proving he was worthy, he offered himself as a sacrifice to the Sipapu. Before the warrior was completely dead, the shamans inhaled the warrior's last remaining breath. Then, taking the Iyani Yi, Ian Yi stone, he blew that last breath over the stone and into the Sipapu, bridging the gap between the third and fourth worlds. The warrior then became Kachina, and his body was buried in the sacred valley. Mockingbird begged Spider Grandmother to give the Ian Yi stone great power so that the Ana uh, Anasazi could better protect the Sipapu against evil. Now, Spider Grandmother was very fond of Mockingbird, so she gave the Iani Stone the power to bring life to the petroglyphs that surrounded the Kiva, creating great armies at the command of the shaman who possessed the stone. Then, showing off to Mockingbird, Spider Grandmother gave the Iani the power to turn enemies of the Sinpapu into petroglyphs. Mockingbird began to brag of Iani's great power. Soon, raiders of distant tribes came searching for the stone. The raiders burned Anasazi crops, polluted the rivers, preyed on their livestock, and committed many other atrocities to force the shaman and his warriors to give up Iani. The Anasazi, however, were prepared to sacrifice all rather than let Iani slip into the hands of foreign raiders. Soon, all that remained were the shaman and his twelve warriors. Desperately, the shaman used Iyani's power to turn the petroglyphs on the canyon walls to, to armies that battled to protect the sacred kiva from the raiders. For 12 years, he continued to fight them, but they still they came. Finally, there were no more warriors to sacrifice to the Sinpapu. Alone and desperate, the shaman used the ultimate power and turned the remaining raiders into petroglyphs on the canyon walls. The danger to the Sinpapu was gone. But with no enemy to fight and no more warriors to sacrifice to the Sipapu, the shaman despaired. He feared the Kachina would come and take the stone away. Now that he had used Ian Yi's power, living without it was something he could not bear. He broke the stone into two and hid the pieces in the canyon. The pain of its loss was so severe that he sacrificed his own life at the Sipapu. The Pueblo Indians still built kivas with Sipapu to, in remembrance of where they came from. It is believed, however, that many of the dead are lost and cannot find their way back to the third world. That is the cause of many of today's troubles. Cool. I guess this is the stone in question. Ha, ah, funny. I hurt myself. I'm trying to find the book. Uh, let's go over here. Oh, what do we have here? Uh, fire destroys a appliance store. About 1 a.m. last Tuesday, Charles Spencer came running from the motel to see CS Appliance ablaze. Oh, that's the burned down place. By the time the Brookhead Brigade was formed, it was too late. Officer Andy Washington thought he heard thunder that night. Whew. And wondered if the fire was not caused by lightning hitting cardboard boxes piled behind the building. I knew I should have cleaned those boxes up weeks ago, Charles said when interviewed. Savings and loans to shorten hours. Tad Matthews, mayor of Cyclone and owner of Safari Savings and Loan, disclosed today that the savings and loan will no longer be open until 5 p.m., but will close at 4 p.m. Tad cited the recent robbery as reason for shortened hours. It was just before closing that the burglar broke into the bank and threatened the mayor at gunpoint. Oh, uh, yes. Try to distract Cyclone. That's right. I read about that. Grocer's son to take over management of gas station. Four years, Philip Dunlop was run both Phil's Market and Gusty Gas. Last Monday, he proudly passed management of the gas station to his son Jason. I've waited a long time for this day. Cyclone native dies. Councilman injured in accident. Early this morning, on her way to the bakery, Nora Hickson Wharton drove into the path of four 
of Cyclone's most outstanding citizens. The four town councilmen had just left the museum after a grueling all-night meeting discussing the welfare of Cyclone. While all vehicles involved saved state damage, Nora's burst into flames, killing her instantly. She was weaving all over the road, said Ted Matthews, who sustained shoulder injuries. George Belairs and Charles Spencer both painfully endured the drive to Flagstaff to have stitches and abrasions looked at by a doctor. Upon his return, George fulfilled his duties as a cyclone preacher and comforted Nora's parents. This is a tragedy that affects the entire town, George lamented. Mayor, major find, cliff dwelling discovered in Devil's Mouth. Uh, Devil's Mouth Canyon joins the host of Southwest Canyons, thought to have been home to Anasazi Indians. Recently, two Devil's Mouth explorers came upon an impressive structure of cliff dwellings. This is definitely a major find, Major Matthew stated. Fortunately, Cyclone natives were well aware of the danger of Devil's Mouth and will wisely stay away from the ruins. De uh, derived from the Navajo Indian word thought to mean the ancient ones, the word Anasazi actually can be translated to mean enemy ancestors. The Anasazi were cliff dwellers who mysteriously disappeared around 1300 AD, leaving behind homes built in canyon walls throughout the southwest. Their disappearance remains one of the world's greatest mysteries. Symbols and masks. Most of the Indians in the Southwest use masks as part of the religious ceremony. Some professionals say that the use of masks came from the Spanish, but there is evidence in early petroglyphs and pottery that mask rituals existed as early as Anasazi. The most widely studied of the mask religions is the Kachina religion. Kachinas are believed to be spirit intermediaries between God and man. If a person is good, it is believed that at the time of death, he or she goes to the underworld and returns as a Kachina to help bring blessings to the living. While Kachinas are mainly benevolent, they can be dangerous if not treated properly. During special ceremonies, when the person slips the Kachina mask over his head, he can see the eyes of the Kachina spirit. The mask is not only important to the ceremony, but to takes on the sacredness of power on its own, of its own. There are stories of evil things happening if the masks are not respected or if the ritual is improper. Certain ty certainly types of masks are so sacred that they must be kept out of sight when not in use. To attract the gods, ceremonies also include paintings and special offerings of prayer sticks, which are sometimes carved with symbols. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other books I need to be wary of? Find the special thing that highlights the mouse. Nope. Alright, anything over here? Okay. Okay. Petrified Indian remains. While working in the silver mines, Frederick Dunlop, one of the original settlers, found a massive lime deposit. Digging into the deposit, he found several Indian bodies that had become petrified by the lime. The only unbroken body can be seen on display at Gusty Cans. And we have here. Oh, there's a cemetery here. Okay. Right. And with that, I guess all what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and quit. Oh, there's more over here. Who's in that? Oh, what do we have here? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. It's a door lock. Oh, I get it. It's a it's a door lock. Okay. So there's got to be a hint through here. Got it. All right. So with that, I guess I'll go ahead and end it here. So thank you all very much for watching. And ciao for now. Ciao for now.